My name is Peter Ashford. I am a marine engineer and ended up as a tutor at the Maritime College in 1984, which is when my first contact with this ship happened. She was built in the early 50s. I understand she was built on the Clyde in Scotland. She, there were uh, three vessels, I understand, built to this plan. They are modelled on a scaled-down version of the HMS Britannia, the Queen's ship, till she was laid up. And she was ordered by the Port Phillip Sea Pilots Company, I think they called themselves, and served in Port Phillip Bay with pilots living aboard and they were taken out to the ships in the small work boat uh, down aft here, the small, there were four of them aboard here, and from there they did their pilot duties, and of course the pilots taking the ships out of Port Phillip Bay were then recovered from the ships and brought back aboard here by the same work boats. She did that right up to about 1982, I think. Yes, maybe early, 81, 82. Regarding the possibility of steaming her over to Melbourne, I think on a wild look you've got an 80% chance of that being successful. The machinery was in first class order when she was laid up. The ship was in, under survey of the, of the Commonwealth authorities and I see no reason why it cannot be got going again. She seems to be holding up very well. She's untidy, make no mistake. There's nothing happened aboard here in 10 years. And uh, the, uh, the birds have made a right old mess. The swallows have been roosting down below and the, and the lower decks, etc., and left a fearsome mess. Paint has deteriorated, some rust, and uh, I'm absolutely sure the electric motors would be retrievable. There are, there's lots of electrical gear down there, which with the time the ship has been laid up, you can expect deterioration, but it's recoverable. Yes. Most of these vessels, uh, it's around the windows and portholes where you get the, the most corrosion. As you can see with these uh, on board this vessel, they're in pretty good condition. In fact, very good condition for the age of the vessel. See here, this is uh, the flybridge wings. Again, uh, around the, the rivets and that, a lot of degradation. Not only surface rust, uh, nothing worse than that. With a good sandblast, uh, it will come up brand new again. The bow has got the uh, the worst example of um, the deck uh, degradation on the entire vessel. Okay, you can see around the bulwarks where the bulwarks meets the meets the deck. There's um, quite a bit of rust and that and paint flaking and that. This is right throughout the whole ship, and uh, it can be fairly easily restored by sandblasting. Right throughout the ship are these beautiful teak bulwarks, but you can see that the, the varnish and that's all flaking off. Uh, again, just wants a bit of tender loving care, sanding and uh, uh, repainting, and it'll come up brand new. Note the original picture of the Wyuna, where it had the cabin set back with these rectangular windows. Uh, the ship has since been modified, which we'll show you now. Uh, the deck that we're standing on is part of the original deck, but other than that, the uh, the structure is an addition that was put on for uh, training uh, cadets at the uh, Maritime College. This is the uh, the original part of the ship. The lo the lower section here is original, and this is the the section that's been extended on above it for the training purposes, which has got to be removed. This is the engine room. The engine room's got three main engines. There's one there, one there, one there. The, the main engines drive generators, which in turn power electric motors, which are attached to the propeller shaft and that's the propulsion for the vessel. This is the steering gear. In the old days, this had been controlled from the wheel, from the big main wheel along this shaft here, down onto the gearbox, which turned this quadrant. But it's been slightly modernised, by adding a telemotor and a small wheel is turned in the, the, the wheelhouse which turns the telemotor this way or that way which in turn does the same thing and turns the gearbox. Here we have the aft 
emergency steering uh, wheel and note the voice tube down to the engine room here. Uh, if there's a failure uh, with the normal ship steering they can use this and uh, um, use it to, uh, to steer the ship by. Here we are in the uh, original ship's wheelhouse. Um, it's been slightly modernised with a, uh, a modern day radar in it, in it but otherwise everything is pretty much as it was uh, back in the pilot days. You can see uh, the, the uh, port um, shaft uh, indicator located. There's a port and starboard which tells you what the revs are on each shaft. In front of the wheel here you can see uh, a, uh, like a periscope hanging down with a mirror attached. Uh, that is through to the ship's compass, the binnacle that's uh, up on the wheelhouse roof. We're standing in the helmsman's position who would look into the mirror and uh, be able to steer the, the course from the compass above the wheelhouse. Here's the anchor winch. Um, it looks like it's in pretty good condition. Uh, very little rust so uh, that looks fine. Uh, you can note here there's the ship's bell, which is seems to work quite fine. This is the training bridge that was used uh, at the Maritime College as part of the addition. Have a look at the, uh, the deck. You can see the deck has been uh, treated. Uh, this was part of the original deck. And this is how the, uh, the rest of the deck throughout the ship's got to be uh, brought back to this standard. This has been used as a, a chart room, um, but as far as we can ascertain from the original drawings, this used to be the original pilot's lounge, which we'd have to restore back to its original condition. This is the deck below the bridge, and um, yes, a corridor here with uh, probably eight or so eight or so uh, cabins this side. Uh, these would have been for the crew. And again, when you enter a cabin, they're all the same, these cabins. You notice how old the switches are. Probably original switches again. Uh, still operational. When we enter the room here, the cabin, we find that there's one bed, or bunk, might be the correct term, with a heater, as are all the rooms and a reasonably large couch and also a uh, smallish type um, cupboard for clothing and so on. Moving further along in the engineer's area we come to the engineer's bathroom which seems quite a little different than the um, bathroom we just saw earlier. This uh, single shower in here Again, it looks like original plumbing. We see the sink. Um, another area over there it seems to have a whole heap of paint and whatever. And a single toilet for the three engineers. Three or four engineers probably on board. Very modern the toilet. <laughs> 